Hello fellow bibliophiles and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. Today I have tea in my favorite Jane Austen mug. That shelf behind me is looking a tad empty and I have on a new favorite shirt of mine, Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. What does this mean? You guessed it. It's time for the Jane Austen July 2021 announcement video. I am so excited to announce the fourth annual Jane Austen July here on Booktube. If you've never heard of Jane Austen July before, perhaps you're new on Booktube or new to my channel, welcome. This is one of my favorite readathons of the year. Jane Austen July is when we encourage you to read books by and about Jane Austen and her life and legacy in the month of July. It's a ton of fun and whether you are brand new to Jane Austen, have never picked up one of her books before, or are a massive Jane Knight, we are so excited to have you participate in this readathon this year. The challenges remain the same this year. They are just the type of challenges that I look forward to revisiting year after year, just like Jane Austen's works themselves. But this year, there is a new and exciting twist to Jane Austen July. I'm thrilled to announce that there will be a new host for Jane Austen July this year. I've been doing this with Katie from Books and Things for the past three years, and we decided to change it up a bit and add a new co-host, and that is Claudia from Spinster's Library. Claudia has consistently made spectacular Jane Austen content on her channel. It's thought-provoking, she's so creative and wonderful. I'm really excited to see what she does and contributes to the readathon this year. Myself and the other hosts have also created a Jane Austen July bingo board. We've come up with a list of things that are frequently found in Jane Austen's literature and have put them together in a bingo board so you can amuse yourself trying to get bingo or trying to black out the whole board if you so desire. I will have a link for the bingo board down below and show it off here as well and on Instagram. It should be a lot of fun to play around with and we hope that you enjoy it. Usually during these announcement videos, I go through the challenges with you and recommend some books and media to whet your appetite for Jane Austen July. So I will do that briefly in this video. I know a lot of you have probably already seen previous year's videos where I recommend many of the same things, to be honest, but I will link even more than I discuss down below in the description. I think most of my research and new Jane Austen content will come in my TBR after I've thoroughly thought about what I want to read for July this year. So the first challenge is the only one that is required to take part in Jane Austen July, and that is to read one of Jane's main six novels. That is one of these books in this stack right here. We've got Pride and Prejudice, Emma, Persuasion, Mansfield Park, Sense and Sensibility, and Northanger Abbey. And as always, the hosts will be doing group read-alongs of select books. This year we are hosting read-alongs of Mansfield Park and then Persuasion at the very end of the month. These two books are arguably Jane Austen's most subtle and quiet books. Fanny Price and Anne Elliot are perhaps the more shy and reserved heroines of Jane Austen's tales. These two are also the books that I am least familiar with and have only read once each, so I am very excited to revisit these two. Mansfield Park centers on Fanny Price, who is sent to live with wealthier relatives. She always feels like an outsider there and maintains a really interesting relationship with her cousin, Edmund Bertram, who seems to be the only one 
that respects and cares for Fanny. Persuasion is about Anne Elliot, an older heroine who eight years ago rejected the love of her life because her friends and family persuaded her that he was not rich enough or important enough to suit her. When Captain Wentworth comes back into Anne's life, she has to face the decisions she's made in the past and come to terms with her regrets and prospects for the future. So I am very excited to revisit these two books. Please check the description down below for the reading schedule of these two, as well as the Goodreads group, which also has the schedule as well as forums for discussion. The second challenge is to read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. So that would be her Juvenalia or her unfinished works perhaps, The Watsons and Sanditon. You might choose to read her letters or her novella Lady Susan which is so witty and snarky and wonderful and features this conniving and manipulative character uh, named Lady Susan. You might want to read her History of England, which she wrote as a child and her sister Cassandra illustrated. There's a lot of really fun options for this one, and it just goes to show you that there is more to Jane Austen than her brilliant main six novels. The third challenge is to read a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time period. So you may choose to read a biography about Jane or a book about the Georgian or Regency period. One of my favorite books of Jane Austen literary criticism would fit this category and that is What Matters in Jane Austen by John Mullen. I have raved about this book on my channel many times before. I think John Mullen is brilliant and he goes into depth about all of these different topics that are prevalent in Jane Austen. It's very interesting because he discusses all the books and all of her works at once and I do want to reread this at some point now that I've read The Watsons and Sanditon. When I first read this book I hadn't done that and they mentioned a few different things that weren't really spoilers or anything, but I think I might get more out of it uh, depending on which books are freshest in my mind. The fourth challenge is to read a retelling of a Jane Austen book. My favorites are Longbourn by Joe Baker, as well as Miss Austen by Jill Hornby. I've done a whole review on this on my channel before. I'll link it down below. It's a fantastic book. It's historical fiction all about the life of Cassandra, Jane's beloved sister, and it focuses on the controversy of Cassandra destroying many of Jane's letters. Another favorite retelling of mine is The Other Bennet Sister by Janice Hadlow. This book is utterly brilliant. I've also done a review of it on my channel, which I will link down below. It is such a fun read. It's kind of a retelling of Pride and Prejudice, but it goes far beyond the scope of that story and centers around Mary Bennet. I never really thought much about Mary Bennet while reading Pride and Prejudice, so this book was fascinating to me and I reread Pride and Prejudice after this and loved what Janice Hadlow did with the original text. This book is brilliant. Definitely check out my review and or just pick up the book because it is just amazing. The fifth challenge is to read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen. So that could be Frances Burney who wrote Evelina or Cecilia. It could be reading Belinda by Mariah Edgeworth, who was a contemporary of Jane Austen's as well. I've previously enjoyed Marriage by Susan Edmonston Ferrier, and of course there's Sir Walter Scott who wrote during that time period, or something by Anne Radcliffe perhaps, if you are interested in going a bit more of a sensationalist or gothic route. The sixth challenge is to watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. There are so many for this challenge. My favorites include the BBC 1995 Pride and Prejudice, which is the classic for j Knights. I also love Emma, which I find to be incredibly in line with my personal interpretations and readings of Emma. There's also Love and Friendship, which is 
oddly enough, about Lady Susan, not about Jane Austen's piece of juvenilia called Love and Friendship. Go figure. There's the 1997 Northanger Abbey with J.J. Fielding, which I love. And of course, there's the new version of Emma, which I don't like as much as the BBC version because I think it points out all of Emma's flaws in a way that I don't really like to see. It's a slightly different interpretation of Emma than I personally have, but a lot of people really like it and it's a beautiful movie cinematically. So definitely take a look at that if you haven't watched it before. The seventh and last challenge is to watch a modern screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. And there are so many of these out there. I will just name some of my favorites. Clueless is my absolute favorite, hands down, best adaptation of Emma, maybe tied with the BBC version. Even though it is very loosely based off Emma, it really captures the spirit and essence of the story. Bridget Jones's Diary is a really fun movie, even though it's only loosely based on Pride and Prejudice. There's Lost in Austin, which is a lot of fun. What if a modern day woman traveled back to Jane Austen's time period? And there's Austin Land, which is an amazing movie. It's not exactly an adaptation of any one Jane Austen book, but it features elements from a lot of Jane Austen's literature and pokes fun at the Austen fandom. I find it really witty and entertaining and it features J.J. Fielding as well. There are so many other movies out there. There are also a lot of YouTube web series. My personal favorite is Emma Approved. The most famous one is probably The Lizzie Bennet Diaries and there are a ton more. I'll link a bunch in the description below so that you can check out all of the fun Jane Austen related content. So that is all I have for you guys today. I cannot wait to put together my Jane Austen July TBR. If you have additional recommendations for people, do please leave them in the comment section down below and do check out Katie from Books and Things' announcement video because she might have some different recommendations than myself. And please check out Claudia from Spinster's Library as well. Her announcement video is sure to be full of new recommendations. I am so glad that she is hosting with us this year. I hope you will take part in Jane Austen July. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Bye.